Hello everyone. So, um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I have just moved and part of moving that everyone is familiar with is the pain of realizing that things you've made have broken. So I've just got some of my miniatures. Some of these I've made in previous videos, some I have not. So like these two I haven't. This one I did. This is actually my first video I did on this lady. So I might actually do that again. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in this particular one. It is a kit bash. It was, um, so it's dragon wings that have been put onto a, um, I'll call it an elf archer. And I just added a lot to it to make it look like a warrior, uh, teethling, demon, whatever you want it to be. So she fell off her base. Um, I've got this guy that I made by hand. So he was a halfling rogue, I think. I'm pretty sure it was a halfling rogue. Um, so a friend of mine played this character, so I made him a mini. But um, as you can see, this is just polymer clay. I used to do this quite often, but I had uh, a lot of these little mirror metal uh, discs that I bought at the dollar store. So they actually are one inch round. So I used to just do that. Like I'd coat them in the polymer clay and then build on top of that so that they had a heavier solid flat base that wasn't clay that would break. So quite a few of these just fell off of those while moving, which was a bit odd, but I think I know what happened. So when I moved everything, I didn't want this to happen. So I glue tacked and taped down the bases in the bottom of a drawer. And then I lightly put bubble wrap over that. So when I went to pull them out, the ones that have this problem pulled off their bases because they were actually stuck on too well with the tape, apparently. Um, it was just packing tape, but um, I guess it pulls pretty good when it's been there for days and uh, it's warm and it just, it happened to seal well. So anyway, um, I don't have a video of ever making this guy, but I think he came out pretty cool um, for one of my first sculpts, trying this so small. And uh, we'll try to put him back on his base. Uh, this, I do have a video of making generally a little goblin. Um, it's super, super simple one of my first videos, um, but they're called bottle cap goblins because I use bottle caps for the base. I was just sort of creative in the beginning because I didn't have a way to cut wood and I knew that I wanted these little wood pucks, but I, I just didn't have the ability to do that at the time. Uh, and I was living in apartments trying to immigrate to a new country. So I got into D and D and I just started looking for anything that I could that was one inch that I could make my little minis on for my DM. So um, this guy was originally hot glued down, but uh, came off, I think he actually came off before we moved and I just found him in these pieces that um, he's no longer on his base. So didn't see this happen with any of the other ones, but there's a variety of reasons that that could have occurred. We have this Banshee lady, another one I never made on screen. If you'd like to see how I make some of these, like in particular, just let me know. I'm happy to do a video on them. I've actually got several of these um, Banshee-like characters, uh, and I've done them in slightly different ways, so I could also do a bit of a, a show of those so you can understand what I did. The tricky thing about these is they don't have legs, the idea being I wanted them to look like they were at an angle and flying at the character, um, and I had also only had these mirror discs at the time, which looked pretty cool when you put a little mirror disc on the bottom and it like reflects up the, the cotton. Um, but it's not the best base, so I'm actually thinking of no longer using these for some things that I do. I, I want to still be able to use them for something because I have a ton of them, uh, but it's obvious to me like this one was hot glued directly on the mirror and that just, that doesn't work. So underneath here is a toothpick and the toothpick with the cotton gets hot glued at this point onto whatever the base is. And that just, yeah, you know, doesn't, doesn't hold very well. And I don't think anybody should really be shocked by that because even just the temperature can affect the way hot glue holds. This is a, a early rendition of a bugbear. I didn't totally know what they looked like. And I just tried to look up some examples. Uh, this is actually my first mini I ever made, part of why he's so weird. Um, but he's got like an attached little shield that's attached with metal. So his shield actually like can be positioned a little bit. Base for this one. So you can see I had built up with tin foil. I didn't have a lot of clay at the time and I was trying to conserve as much as I could. So he actually has a tin foil armature on the inside of his torso. And then the base was a separate, it's tin foil with scrap polymer clay around it. And then I did a bit more like detailed 
clay on top um, once I started to like do his feet and stuff. And this is another one where this was just one of those mirrors, which again is why it released so easily. Um, probably just part of it that I didn't wrap the clay far enough around, but it was my first time I was experimenting. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I will say some of these are quite dirty as well. So like this one, which is really cool mounted miniature. Basically it has a very long tail. The tail broke off in the move. So I have to figure out how that was positioned on originally. It was like that um, to put that back on. But the point is that quite a few of these, I don't know if you can see well in the camera, but they are very dirty. They're covered in dust. Um, so I'm also going to clean them uh, very carefully. So I'll show that bit of the process as well. So now that we've got our patients, I can show you our surgical materials. So this is my master bag of dowel bits. You can see here. So basically all I did, and I, I've talked about this in other videos as well, but um, basically I just got a one inch dowel so it was a super long tube, pipe, dowel. <laughs> I got a super long dowel and I did my best to cut them uh, thin. So they're, they're not all even, which isn't a big deal because frequently on my minis, I have them in poses and I build up the base anyway with like rocks and like you can see like this one has little skulls on it and stuff like that. So it, it actually, for me anyway, it, it doesn't matter at all. As long as they sit flat, which they do, um, and I don't know if you can tell very well, but there's rough edges on some of them. I took sandpaper before I mount any of my minis or start making any of my minis, and I just buff the, the fray stuff off to give them a smooth edge so that they look nicer, hopefully. Now for glue options. So this is really janky, but um, <laughs> one of the options we have is Scoby Bacon Bond. Um, there is a emo version, and there's probably other former clays by now that have um, bacon bond options. It's sort of seen as like a bakeable glue. Um, I recommend this for pieces that have not been painted and are only made of polymer clay. So for example, this lady is not going to work because she's actually made out of plastic and green stuff. So she will melt in the oven. So she's not a candidate for this. Um, something complicated like this, where it's fairly tall and it's got a lot of paint on it, that won't work well because it's probably going to either discolor or burn the paint and it risks potentially burning or overheating some of the higher clay if you're heating from above. Um, like if you, if you rest it on tin foil or a pan, it's more likely to get more heat on the top and I just don't want to risk it because it's such a complicated piece that was um, like a personal custom piece. So I just don't want to risk that. So I'm not going to do it on that one. Um, honestly, going through my options, this guy is a good candidate because he actually is not painted. Um, I did all this with colored polymer clay um, and I just did a very quick um, black wash over him. So even the paint that is there is not significant. Um, I think I did like the little yellow buttons. I just, I dropped tiny bits of acrylic into holes that I pressed in the clay. But this guy would be a really <clears throat> decent candidate, partially because it's only the base that's being resecured and he's pretty short and he's not painted. So he has potential to use the bacon bond. Um, similarly with this guy, the only thing that's painted on him besides a thin black wash is the sword. Um, I didn't have a metallic colored clay at the time so I painted this with an acrylic silver and then I did also do a PVA glue I put in his mouth and I put on his eyes to give him like a drooly look. Um, so I'm not sure what would happen to the glue but I am worried that the sword is already very thin and tall and flimsy and that baking it again will actually injure that. So I don't think he's a good candidate because of that. And then similarly with this one, this is also all colored clay with a black wash on top and then I did tiny white details so I gave her white fingernail tips and I, I just did like teeth. Um, but other than that, this is actually all just colored clay but I have the cotton to deal with and this hair has always made me quite nervous with her because it's just little worms of clay and um, I've had, I've shockingly not had that many break and fall off 
I thought for sure they would all be broken off by now because this piece is like four years old and we've used it quite a bit. Um, but I guess when people see this, they're just generally more careful, which is cool. Um, but again, um, hot glue on the bottom. I don't actually remember how I secured the toothpick inside her anymore. I may have used glue. I think I just sculpted her on top. Uh, but because I can't be confident on that and hot glue will definitely melt, which I have foolishly <laughs> done before with baking polymer clay sculptures using hot glue inside, uh, will not be making that mistake again. So I do not consider this a good candidate again for those reasons. Finally, we've got this little guy. Um, so he is also just colored clay with a black wash to make him look really dark. Um, so he would be fine because he's very short and he doesn't have any paint to burn. He just has this little piece of, that, that was a toothpick once upon a time, that I decided is like a weird little spear that he holds very awkwardly. Um, but he was originally secured, as you'll remember, on the bottle cap with hot glue. So I would have to get rid of this, which I'm not, I don't really want to do that because I like showing people when they are using these things that they can be creative and make something simply and I think it helps kind of inspire that with players so when they see like oh it's like a small hideous little creature that doesn't need fine good detail and like I might be able to do that and it's you know it's just a toothpick and it's just a couple blobs put together to make it look like a little guy with like you know a mouth and eyes is the most complicated thing about him um, and then I can just grab a bottle cap because it's the right size, right? Like, I think that's kind of cool. So, um, I want to reuse this, so I might just not use hot glue, but I'm not going to bake it. Um, because this is actually a totally different kind of clay that I never baked. Um, it's a tile adhesive. Again, I was, uh, sort of living out of a suitcase at the time, so I just used whatever came available to me. And as odd as tile glue sounds, I was taking a mosaics course at the time, so I just used a little bit of that to stick him in there um, and give him like a textured, it was supposed to look like a cave base essentially, and then I just glued him in the center. But uh, So I can't bake that. I could bake him, but I want to keep this stuff together, so I'm going to look for an alternate method to do that. Next we have E6000. This stuff is amazing. Um, <laughs> you can't see it, but it's a jewelry and bead glue. It's really, really strong. It does have a bit of fumes, um, but it, it works amazingly well. I really recommend it. I use it very often. So this would be really good with something that um, I can fairly quickly press together. Um, isn't going to be baked. It can be painted. It can be made out of anything. It doesn't really matter. So th this is really my go-to stuff, but not everyone has this available and um, potentially with the poison keep out of reach of children. I don't know if that'll work for everybody as far as applying it, um, depending on how old you are and what you're using it for. So uh, I use it in a well-ventilated area because of the smell and the poison indications. Um, but other than that, it's, it's really, really good stuff. So um, I'm gonna use this for the majority. In fact, I think I'm actually gonna use this for everything. Uh, and we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully it'll work fine. Um, but if this doesn't work, I don't have a ton of other options that I think are good. You could use PVA glue. I wouldn't only because it takes a very, very long time to dry. And in my opinion, it's not actually that strong unless it's like, um, in something. So like a good example is paper mache or cloth mache. If you're putting the PVA glue all over something that can like absorb it and you use it kind of like a band-aid you could potentially do something like that like say I wanted to reattach this tail and all I had was PVA glue I would take toilet paper like one ply of toilet paper so in other videos I've shown how I make bases but you can actually pull the plies of toilet paper apart and have like really really thin tissue paper with that and then I would put some PVA glue in here and then put the little tail on and then I would wrap a very thin piece of that PVA saturated um, tissue paper around this kind of like a band-aid you'd have to repaint it when you're done but um, and it would probably be slightly you know it'd be textured so it might be a little lumpy or something like that but it wouldn't be that bad so if that's all you've got you know use what you have um, I just won't use it because I have other options so just an idea so besides our e6000 there's also the super glue 
Um, so as long as you have super glue that is in an okay state, you can use it. Um, I find that super glue tends to go bad pretty quickly for me. I don't know if I just don't like tighten the tops well enough. I also have a lot of frustration. I don't know if you can tell how chewed up this is, but I frequently have to use pliers to try and get this thing open. And now the pointed top won't open anymore. And I actually have to open like the bottle part, which is not ideal, but super glue is an option. Um, for me, it doesn't always actually harden fast enough where I want it to. Um, and the easy way around that is baking soda. So baking soda speeds up the chemical reaction of the super glue. That's all you need to know. So you have some options with this. You can either put the super glue down first and then sprinkle a little bit of baking soda on top. The only thing with that is that it will be lumpy wherever the super glue lands because it, it instantly hardens it and the baking soda actually sort of like fuses with the super glue. Um, there's loads of other um, online YouTubers that, that do miniatures and kit bashing and stuff that do this method. So if you look around, you'll see it. Sometimes they don't have baking soda. They have a specific accelerant that's a spray. I don't have any of that. And this was in my kitchen, so I grabbed it. <laughs> so the one option is to sprinkle the baking soda on top. The other option is to put the baking soda on first and then drip the super glue uh, onto the area that you're trying to adhere. That is very tricky. You can try it that way. It usually doesn't work out great for me, but it does limit the amount of um, like sprinkled excess texture that gets around when you sprinkle the baking soda on after. So it, if you can manage to do it, you can try it that way isn't the easiest option in my opinion um but experiment like that you know play around see see what you can do that's half the point of making things is to to try new things and and experiment um but anyway so as far as super glue goes today um i think i'm just gonna stick with my trusty e6000 because it's easier and i'll use the um super glue as a backup so if I try something and it fails, this will be my backup. However, that being said, I would like to point out that I have actually used it on this one before. And I only did super glue, I didn't use the accelerant. So I don't know if you can see it. You should be able to see it. So see how it's like really horribly glossy right here? So I didn't repaint after and I probably should have, but this tail was broken off before. So actually I think it's quite a good sign for super glue that it broke off up here and it didn't re-break there because if super glue wasn't as strong it would have just re-broken in the same spot right once there was pressure on it but it did not so i think that's a pretty big plus sign for super glue as far as how well it works um but again i'm i'm going to try different things and see how it goes so even though super glue was successful with this in the past from what i recall i had to sit for what felt like an eternity probably only 15 seconds but when you're trying to hold a little piece of something on a little piece of something else that I feel like forever when you're trying to like balance something. So I think I'm just going to do the E6000 on the tip, hold the little tail top on, and hope that it adheres fairly quickly. Okay, so here's my cleaning materials. Got some water here. So um, I don't, because they're all made with different things, um, and there is acrylic wash on them, uh, so I don't want to rub too much of that kind of stuff off, so I'm going to be careful, but basically really good use for old toothbrush. I mark the sides with um, black marker just in case. Also do the base so that it's very obvious that this is no longer for my mouth. <laughs> so um, it's a pretty hard bristled toothbrush. Um, I just like hard bristled toothbrushes. I don't have any soft ones. And then I have some q-tips which are really good for the nooks and crannies and just trying to reach in uh, where this won't necessarily work out so great. And then I just have a paper towel to generally wipe it off because I think there's gonna be a lot of dust. So I'm just gonna get into cleaning the pieces.
we're gonna let crud. So the other thing about E6000 is that any contact with air makes it tear. So even though it has this nice screw on tight top, it always gets a little bit of air in the tip. So I just have to get something, a pin or something to push down in and sort of clean out any of the glue that's essentially cured in the little tip. Okay. So let's try a toothpick. Hopefully that'll work. There we go. See the glue coming out? So some of this first bits of glue is not going to be usable, so you actually just want to like scoop that off the top because there will be chunks of cured glue mixed in there, so just discard that. Alright, now I'm just going to squeeze again. The only thing I don't like about E6000 is because it's very thick, it takes a little while for it to come out. So once it starts to come out, it tends to come out for like a while. And that usually wastes some because it's more than what I need. So just put two little dollops on, and then I'm just gonna take her, press her on top, and just push her little feet in real hard. And I'm just gonna hold her, and I'll just test and see if she'll stand up. Which will. Um, if you're trying to do this and you don't have steady hands, or you don't have uh, an easy time gripping things, or you know, it's just it's too fiddly. You can try taping um, or, or somehow like straying down. I would say tape is probably easiest. I would just use like masking tape so it doesn't pull as hard as like packing tape does. And um, just use that to try and like pull it or hold it in place. That's a, an option if you've got shaky hands. I'm just gonna, I have to get kittens off the table. So I'm just gonna rest her up against another figure for a minute. So I'm gonna do that. I hope that works. Should make her stand up more straight. I'm just gonna test them on a base. Let's see how that looks. So you can see the, the clay on the mirror is a little bit bigger than these one inch pucks. Just tiny, tiny bits, a millimeter. Um, so it's not going to fit perfect and it probably means that the very edge is going to break off over time but um i'm okay with that it'll be all right um if anything oh, let's see. oh yeah i can just pick this edge off now so i'm just gonna do that now it's just gonna break off anyway so i might as well so like this is a good example like i'm barely putting any pressure on it this is polymer clay but it's extremely thin polymer clay um just something to keep in mind though that it, it is fragile I've made lots of different sculptures and pieces out of it, and it's a great medium to work with. It's amazing. It's a really good way to learn how to sculpt, but if you don't bake it right, it will be brittle or soft, and um, sometimes like this, if, if pieces are just very thin and delicate, that's it. There's not much you can do about it. So um, for some things, I find other clays to be way more preferential. Um, Green stuff is really cool. It's almost like a plastic when it's done. I'm just putting the E6000 on the glue, or glue on the bottom, by the way. I'm just gonna use my toothpick to spread it around a bit so it's even. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's ups and downs to polymer clay. If you make like a solid block sort of thing, like something without a lot of thin details and whatnot, it can be great and last a really long time. Um, but even things like this, like, I don't expect these to last forever. They've actually lasted longer than I expected, if I'm being honest. So I'm just pressing it down lightly all the way around. As we've seen, the polymer clay can crack and break and fall off. It does still have the overhang, but again, it's, it's gonna break off on its own eventually. I'm not really worried about it. If I really, really wanted, once this is cured, I could take a very sharp X-Acto knife and just run it around that whole edge to take it off. But I just, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And like I said, this was one of my first in sculpted minis, so it doesn't get used super often anymore. All right, so that's pretty good. You can already pull on it and it's not coming off, so I'm just gonna sit in next to her while they're curing. 
next one pretty much the same deal um, but this one has the tin foil where the other one was just polymer clay um, so any overlap here there's actually really nothing I can do about it because there's actually tin foil in there I don't know if you can see it real well it like curls up in the edge um, but because it has the tin foil and because this polymer clay base is way thicker I'm much less concerned about any kind of breakage or whatever so I'm just gonna glue them onto a base and However long he lasts is however long he lasts. goblin guy. This is the old hot glue and I just want to take that out if I can. I probably need something metal to do that. I found a metal pointy tool. So this is a um, clay sculpting tool and it's just wooden handle with very very sharp metal ends so this should work really well. Um, so he doesn't have any glue left on him, which is good, so I'm just gonna put the glue on his feet. Oh, please, stop. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's a long chair behind me. I promise they get a lot of attention. <laughs> they just decide when they have needs. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit in here, too. Just because it's very deep. My little guy, and stick him in there. I actually like him kind of sunk in because it looks like he's like crawling out of a crack, like he was trying to hide or something like that. I think it's really funny. He's very dopey looking, but anyway, so I balanced him in the middle, and because he's like down in there, I don't have to worry about it as much like I did with the um, Archer Paladin lady. So he should be good. Plus, he's very short, so it's easier for him to balance. Uh, okay, let's move on to this one. So this one's really tricky because, again, this is a there's a toothpick in there. But there's also a little bit of wire that I tried to use to like give her a base, and then there's also the hot glue. And the hot glue's still there quite strongly, and it's I think it's even stuck in yeah the cotton is also stuck in the hot glue. So I'm gonna attempt to use this like a base and put glue on glue and see what happens so man, i really want to put her back on the mirrors i'm gonna try an experiment and i'm gonna put her back on a mirror because i like the mirror look with her i think it's cool um like i said it sort of like reflects up at the cotton um but i have no idea how well this will work i have tried scratching these mirrors before and it didn't really work out so I'm sure there's a good way to scratch them using some sort of power tool most likely um, but I just want to try to do what I can with what I've got so the only problem I see going on here is similarly to the other ones with the balancing act so I'm using E6000 to try to glue hot glue blob on the end of a toothpick and wire with cotton mixed into it, onto a mirror. I'm not expecting this to go well, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna hold it probably for a minute, and then I'm gonna attempt to do what I did with the Archer Lady and balance her on there. Hopefully this works. But she's like, she's pretty spooky, right? I mean, look at this lady. Oh, I think she looks pretty cool. And again, one of my first attempts at uh, sculpting miniatures. And our final piece. I'm gonna use a toothpick for this because it's this very small spot right here. Just gonna squeeze out a little bit of glue. And I'm gonna paint it.
so I'm just gonna leave it alone and let these guys sit and cure and then come back and pull on them and poke them and test them and see if the glues I use worked. All right, it's been a few hours and we're going to test this out and see how everything did. We've got this guy. Looks clean. Not moving at all. Awesome. Next. Nice and clean. On there tightly. And the big question for her is, does she stand? And she does. So I guess the lesson from this is pushing it up against something if it's something that is difficult to balance and doesn't sit right, you can just do that. This is the one I was really worried about because it's just a toothpick and it's using hot glue to a mirror. So I'm pushing on that with my finger pretty hard. It's not moving. So that's a good sign. Just wraps around like that. There we go. And she looks great. And stand test stands totally fine and I can even kind of push it around. She's not falling over. It's cool. It's not even weighted. It's just a mirror. Try this guy out. It's the one with a little bit of overhang but really tightly on there. Awesome. Stands fine. This is the one I'm gonna want to do some painting on. I think I should anyway though because um, there were other points where like this arm fell off a while ago and I used super glue. So it's, there's quite a bit of random shiny spots. Um, so I might just repaint this anyway, but um, yeah, as far as this repair job goes, seems fine, seems good. Um, I don't wanna test it any harder than I think is really necessary, like something, Thinking, you know, somebody bumping it with their finger or, or dropping it kind of hard or something like that. But nothing, you know, I'm not going to like chuck it across the room. Uh, and then this is the last one, which the biggest question for me was just the balancing, really. Um, because it was pretty flat. I had the tin foil. I just put extra glue in there. But after all these, I'm quite confident it's totally fine. I can pull on that a bit and it's, nothing's happening. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you have any ideas for things that you'd like to see in the future, um, doesn't have to be minis or, or monster sculpts, um, could be bigger ones. I've done lots of other stuff, so yeah. If you have any ideas, let me know. Um, I have some things that are coming up soon that I'll be working on and sharing. I'm probably going to switch to every other week just because I'm still getting my stuff in order here. So uh, yeah, expect the next video from me. I'm probably going to do a uh, lighter cover um, casing. Um, thinking Legend of Zelda themed, but so stay tuned and uh, thanks for your support.